you up to date uh, with the things that we discussed at, at uh, Interconnect, uh, a couple of things that have happened since that time, and um, may even surprise some of you that were at Interconnect, let's see. Um, so uh, I don't have a great deal of roadmap information in here, but uh, inevitably we, we talk uh, about it as we go through, and I think many of you will be able to recite this uh, slide off by heart. Roadmaps change uh, for all sorts of uh, uh, reasons, many of them good. And so, uh, you, many of you will have heard of some of the recent reorganisation, um, sort of renaming, uh, bringing together uh, some uh, key uh, components uh, into a group known as IBM Systems Middleware. Uh, that brings in the NetCool portfolio, a wide range of other uh, things, websphere, MQ, hardware pieces. Um, Generally, uh, our part of the portfolio has um, really sees it in a positive way, and what you're seeing here is I've just uh, outlined uh, the area of uh, IT service management as we're sort of, um, basically bringing the group together in, in that sort of area. And we focus very much on operations with event analytics and, of course, right the way up to all of the stakeholders at the dashboard level. You um, see this uh, slide in a number of presentations uh, going forward. And a slide I often use, don't, uh, I'm sure everyone on the call is familiar with these rapidly expanding uh, rates of data, a volume of data that's coming from so many different things. And it's meaning that the tried and tested event management capabilities are just as important, but you guys need more help. Um, the volumes have just become too great. The change is too rapid uh, for the sort of standard process to be good enough on its own. You need to be more proactive, and that's exactly where we came in with um, uh, a year ago with uh, Netcall Operations Insight, which was launched at Pulse in 2014, uh, bringing together Netcall Omnibus at the heart, the leading event management system, which uh, has some uh, good things uh, added to it this time around. And I also run at the front, don't go looking for a new version of Omnibus just now. There are interim features out there through the fixed packs, which I'll be talking to as we go through. And built-in uh, analytic, both into the directly into the product for event search and for historic analysis, has been there since uh, January. Tied integrations out to the other analytic pieces like uh, predictive and, of course, um, performance management, network management, to give the complete picture. Um, not going to drill down into this deeply again. We've done a couple of calls and may do one later if uh, there's demand. Uh, really want to give good time for Zane uh, towards the end for the demonstration. And just though, a quick uh, review over the way that uh, we're benefiting from I IBM overall is looking to move to a more sort of continuous improvement model, uh, particularly so in the services layer, up in the um, software as a service, for example, uh, where it's under our control, we can innovate faster you know, because it is uh, in, in our hands, but also to bring that down and keep that momentum going for the on-premise solution. And certainly we're getting uh, fairly clear signals that from a point of view of uh, event management, uh, the you know, the IT operations I'm not coming across very many people who see that particular capability moving up into uh, a cloud facility, but certainly there are many that are having to integrate with cloud operations, the so-called so hybrid model. Uh, that's hitting more and more people. And so, as I already said, we launched at Pulse last year with a significant upgrade in the middle of 2014 uh, with Omnibus 8.1, Impact 7.1, on the sort of new client, the new analytics capabilities, bringing the network management piece in as an add-on uh, option uh, into uh, Insight. Made some minor releases in the autumn and uh, announced the more uh, 
significant uh, release. Uh, talked about it at Interconnect. The announcement letter went out just afterwards. What we're talking about here today is now generally uh, available. And a couple of red stars on there as we'll be talking about or demonstrating these items on the right hand side as we go through. Just a reminder that some of this functionality is delivered as part of the underlying component products, NECL Omnibus and so on. Some is specific to Operations Insight, particularly around the analytics piece. And event management is nowhere without the broadest uh, library of means of collecting uh, those events, uh, bringing them in for uh, consolidation. And so here I have put in a little bit of roadmap as well. Um, as most of you will know, all of you that we do release integration updates three times a year. Uh, occasionally slip one in in between if something is urgent. Um, and in the set that uh, went out uh, just last week, straight after Interconnect, uh, there are a number of, that result from RFEs, Requests for Enhancement, and Votes. They do have an effect, not as often as we would all like, but they do count. Um, and one example in there is the SNMP probe where we have added DNS buffering and timeouts um, to that capability, something that's been requested many times. Um, and over quite a period of time, we recognize, but the guys found you know, uh, found ways of doing it effectively, um, uh, low down, uh, and that say is delivered um, uh, already uh, in the last couple of weeks. List on the right hand side, deliberately or mostly in <laughs> alphabetical order, and a couple of things tacked on the bottom there. Um, but that's our list for prioritization, and again, if there's something on the list that really matters to you, vote for it. If there's something missing, raise the request. See who else votes for it. This does move at uh, frequent times, as you say. And a couple I will put, pick out on there, not least because I'll be talking about them again, and Zane particularly will be referring to it in the demo. You've seen those out-of-the-box correlation rules initially for Nokia NetAct and NMS 2000. This is um, bringing in some domain knowledge, in, more domain knowledge into the set of rules files. Um, the Nokia uh, is a GA now. Uh, we've got others that are where we're working with customers to improve that around TTE and Alcatel Lucent, as you can say, the 5620 SAM, which is the most frequently downloaded um, EMS uh, probe. And so look out for those as, as we go through. There will be regular updates. And you'll see, particularly with Zane's demonstration, just how important they've become. Looking on, uh, we, ha we are getting very good feedback from the customer base. Yep, far from perfect. But these numbers are examples of feedback that we've got from different parts of the system, whether it's more rapid installation, getting the thing up and running, uh, being able to maintain it more easily because a number of customers, end users don't need Java plugins. All of that good stuff. Um, we want to make these numbers better. We intend to make these numbers better. But the good thing is they have improved over uh, earlier times. So looking at the analytics pieces, uh, as we said, the initial release included the event search analytics with the log analysis uh, tool. Uh, as you'll see, we've made some improvements there, which I'll talk on to. Seasonal um, historic research looking for event patterns that happen at recognizable intervals, giving um, the IT department the chance to step back, recognize those patterns, and take action, getting away from break, fix, which is the more usual state, fix a problem, move on to the next one. That is, of course, still going on. What we're looking to do with all of these things is to help the guys gain the time and the information to automate more, to correlate better. And, and in the case of the related event analytics at the bottom of the screen, we've already built in as, we, as the system recognizes sets of groups, uh, groups of events that are occurring within a chosen time window, which are related 
give the SME the opportunity to review those groups and if and adjust them. But if they recognize that that is a repeatable group, it should be correlated together to underneath a particular event, that rule can be implemented through policies by a one-click uh, uh, operation. You don't need to then go down in the code. First phase, but very much an area of uh, focus going forward, looking to, call it at the moment, semi-automate the sort of correlation that you see can be done based on the information that's coming back from the analytics. Right now, you know, the SME needs to push the button to say, yep, that makes sense, automate it. You know, as it gets better, perhaps the trust will improve and it may be fully automated. That would be a great ambition. I think it's a little bit of, uh, yeah, we have the technology, but I don't think the, the sort of people's confidence is there in the analytics until they see it working regularly. So um, the third one uh, in that list, related event groupings, is something that delivers in Omnibus and ties back to that out-of-the-box uh, domain knowledge that the guys have started to build up where they've recognized and built a set of uh, capability into the product where events group together potentially over a long period of time. The examples we have uh, are particularly in sort of telco area, um, but where we've shown this to other sort of enterprise customers, they, they have each of the ones that I've spoken to and some that Zane has spoken to have said, yep, get that. I see how we can use it for our own correlation, build our own uh, information in there. And so more of that as we go forward. And this is our main investment focus for Operations Insight going forward, expanding on the analytic capability with different algorithms and driving more automation subject to SME approval uh, behind that analytics to um, uh, help in event reduction, better correlation, and the ultimate aim, reducing the number of incidents that need ticketing and therefore need some action, which costs money. We're looking to fix it to help save money, as we were saying. Released in October, just through interim feature around web the web GUI and a new Insight Pack, um, with an update to the underlying log analysis engine with some guided event analysis. The first release was simply, we gave people the tool. Here's a launching contest. You can search your event history that you've pushed across uh, into the, the log analysis tool. What we've learned, and customers have helped us learn, is the type of thing that it, it makes sense to do in your initial in investigation. So basically we've taken that field experience, which, which was documented, but brought it into the tool. There are a set of searches that it makes sense to do when you first start looking at this kind of analysis, when you're looking to be proactive, looking for hotspots. And so we built that guidance into the tool, pre-built the searches, built in the dashboard. And again, that's something that we'll look to improve as we go forward. So the initial thing was, give you guys the tool, we've learned from it, and improved it, um, hopefully, no, <laughs> for sure. Um, linked also to the search and released uh, just um, last week um, for those customers with the network management option of Operations Insight, we now have a sort of network aware search where um, either uh, by launching context from uh, the uh, topology view uh, or potentially also from the event list uh, is the ability to search for events along the layer two or layer three path of the two selected nodes, potentially the endpoints. Easier to spot within the topology view, less easy in the event list unless you have some background knowledge that these two events are likely to be uh, along the same path. Um, but nonetheless, the facility is there for those that understand it and can make use of it. Um, it is certainly easier to use or more intuitively usable uh, from the topology view. 
So those are the sort of key areas in which we've improved in the more recent, uh, the most recent release. Um, one of the things that I is in the slides I didn't call out uh, is that this now ships with the latest version of log analysis, which is globalized, which opens up the event search uh, to more languages, more encodings uh, to improve the reach of that particular capability. Looking forward, we will be continuing very much in the same vein, looking to uh, improve the search and event analytic capability, extend the automated or semi-automated action capability between that from the related events, potentially build that into seasonality, look to bring those together in a more sort of cohesive way. The sort of nature of analytics uh, and the investigations that we do is that not all great sounding ideas deliver good results in production. Um, others, which maybe initially take a little bit more, more thought, come out with some great, you know, great results. And so um, we tend to, from a development, initial development perspective, focus on the analytic itself, getting the, the right results, getting that uh, into people's hands, and then extending it, then adding on to the, the automation pieces. And that very much is what we will do. As we expand the capabilities, both in real time and historic, we'll look to expand the automation side. Significant work going on in the area of network management, especially around software-defined networks, NFE, uh, uh, looking later this year, delivering uh, specific pros, specific correlation, topology, uh, view, discovery, and, and root cause uh, around that area. The networks are moving around like they never did before. Um, it's a little bit like going through server virtualization, but for the networks, interestingly, software-defined uh, networking seems to be affecting the enterprise a little bit sooner than the sort of core networks of the, uh, of the service providers. But it's growing, it's affecting everybody, and for sure we're, we're working to make sure that you have the, the right additions into this tool set to work uh, in your environment and help you manage that um, yeah, shift in sand of the, uh, say, software networking. Looking forward, let's see in the bottom, so later this year, uh, we're looking to bring in what we call service composition. Um, and that is the ability to dynamically recognize relationships between applications, servers, and potentially the underlying network to make sure that you get better correlation, better understanding of the sort of service level impact at that sort of level uh, within the operations inside tool. And announced that Pulse demonstrated interconnect. So <laughs> Pulse is quicker to say, but it's interconnect. It was big. It was busy. Um, there's something we're calling collaborative operations, which I will come on to but, um, on another slide. But let's call out that the beta program started at Interconnect and is available online in Service Engage right now. So just back a little bit, I touched already on the um, service structure, the application st structure given its longer name, application dependency discovery, uh, and looking to build that in uh, using a capability that was uh, added into um, TADM, actively application discovery dependency mod, horrible, um, where the discovery is now very much more dynamic. Uh, it was a great presentation by one of the long-standing customers uh, at Interconnect who talked about how much faster he's now able to map onto uh, applications and the underlying infrastructure and dependencies. We're looking to bring key parts of that into Operations Insight um, uh, looking at later this year, particularly making sure that we don't only rely on um, you know, topologies uh, within I IBM products. We recognize there are some third-party involvement out there. And uh, say, look out for the beta program. Uh, but the beta is in progress. There's collabor collaborative operations, uh, which is looking to 
person certainly tightly integrated with the NECL components on-premise, as application performance monitoring already does, as Smart Cloud Control Desk already does. We have customers who have Smart Cloud Control Desk or APM up in the cloud integrated with their on-premise NECL. Um, this is initially planned as a set of services uh, for alert notification so that end users can, um, if you give them permission, uh, through that service identify events that they should be notified on, choose the method of notification, uh, getting uh, affected by calendaring as, as you would expect. Um, that is um, as I say, available in beta now. Um, it's ex expected to run behind APM, but also to be available uh, as this as part of this collaborative operations service. In under that same banner, runbook automation, something that um, task, the underlying tasking can be done in many different places. But bringing it together in an understandable way, a manageable way, that can help the user actually drive through the runbook and trigger the automations that make sense from that runbook, uh, either at operator request or automatically, is a, is a big area of investment for us in the context of this particular service. And adding in uh, collaboration spaces. Uh, whenever there are, uh, are problems, there are often um, multiple people that need to be involved, multiple inputs. Status reports need to be given at regular intervals. Um, what the collaboration space is designed to do is to bring that information together, bring the people together without necessarily having them on the phone all of the time. They can give input, they can update status values, Management can come in and immediately see what's going on, what the latest status is, without needing a, a report every 10 minutes. Um, that information is there and available to them. As I said, is in trial now. A little bit more information around uh, the automation runbook and the, uh, as you can see, the initial uh, event-driven uh, screens where. The, the operator can launch out to, to the runbook, which will potentially contain scripts, tasks, automated triggers that they can go through uh, as part of the, um, uh, the sort of triage and resolution process. And the way that we're looking to deliver this is clearly adding value from IBM, but also looking at ways that the community can contribute. Um, and add value into this tool. Where people are prepared to share, um, we're looking to help them share it through this uh, through this method. So, um, where you have an interest in this and the strength of this, do please get involved with feedback in these uh, sort of early trials. And just for you, here is that sort of call for action, if you like. Um, this is straight out of the uh, Interconnect slide. The links are there on Service Engage, where you can easily sign up for the beta you know, um, and get involved straight away. We're looking for any sort of feedback and input on what you think is important in these areas, how we can build them out and, and bring them uh, to your desks uh, to uh, help with your uh, capabilities. Um, and finally, before I hand over to, uh, to Zane, I've taken you through very quickly because I know we have only an hour, and for some of you that hour has already gone. Hope you're able to stay on. Um, and just a sort of final uh, stage. I refer to Service Engage several times through here. Initially, it was the method of delivering our SaaS offerings, our cloud offerings. That, of course, it still is, but for operations management, which doesn't yet have uh, a full cloud delivery, I'm not convinced that it should have. Uh, certainly from the feedback that the customers are giving us, the lower levels, 
remain on premise. Some of the higher levels potentially in the cloud. Jury is out, always ready to listen. But what we have uh, been able to do is to bring some collateral up onto Service Engage, bring the trials and the demonstrations up onto that platform so that you don't have to wait for one of these calls to see the latest state, to take a demo. Um, there are updates to be done now that we have the latest version out there, but certainly do watch that space. It's intended to become the go-to place for information about operations ma uh, management, about operations insight. So uh, you know, uh, do keep uh, an eye on that. Um, we hopefully will have time for questions at the end, and there is a chat available there. Um, what I'd like to do though, is to hand back um, so that uh, Zane can pick this up and show you more about some of these sort of key features that were released last week. Thanks, Don. I'll, I've taken control of Zane. I will now make you the presenter. Okay, so apologies folks, but I'm going to have to quickly pause the recording as I need to switch browser quickly up if it's not working with Firefox. Apologies for this. Well, Zane is doing that. If anybody had any questions um, following Don's presentation and wanted to go ahead and get them asked while we're waiting um, on Zane to begin, please feel free to use the chat box for this time. Okay, I'm ready. Robin, if you want to try again. Okay, let me try this again. Right, so hopefully everyone can see my screen now. Can you see my screen? Yes, we're able to see it. Okay, great. So I'll start then. So, um, Net Cooperations Insight. So um, I am going to be talking today about um, two of, well, a new capability introduced in the latest uh, version of Net Cooperations Insight uh, that GA um this week, uh, 1.3. And it's around a, 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 a terrific new capability uh, called uh, event grouping. So um screenshot there um, shows you um, how we're leveraging the new the all new um, Java applet free event viewer. Uh, some of the new features of that, the um, the two dimensional nature of it with the grouping and the twisties and whatnot. So just a quick recap, I've got about um, I've got about half a dozen slides or so just to sort of set the scene. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually I've actually got a live demo which I'm gonna share with you. Um, I figure a live demo is a lot more interesting than slideware. So, um, but just to set the scene, so help you to understand what you're looking at, I've just got a few slides to explain it. So this slide you're looking at now, uh, just to recap on Netcool Operations Insight to date. So this is 1.2. So the two main, well, two of the main um, capabilities were around operational agility and operational efficiency. So for the uh, log file analysis tool, which is a part of Operations Insight, um, it allowed us to have tools in our event viewer to allow us to do keyword searches on, event, on uh, single events or groups of events to help us um, drill down and um, find the proverbial needle in the haystack, helps us to sort of pinpoint problems. So there's a whole bunch of analytics tools that are, are, are in Operations Insight 
and are continuing to be put into operations insight to provide you with all sorts of tools and capabilities to um, slice, dice, analyze uh, your data uh, in many different ways. From the operational efficiency point of view, um, the log file analysis tool provides us with um, views into our data, so both live and historical, uh, that allows us to reduce the noise, so target events that um, we can potentially eliminate from our system or suppress um, with the overall goal of trying to reduce the overall event volume in our systems. Um, the second bullet point there under operational efficiency, um, Don mentioned seasonality. So this is uh, looking at, uh, on a per event basis, looking for events that occur with chronological regularity. So this is a problem that always crops up every day at 4 o'clock or every Thursday, for example. So it's, it helps us to actually identify these events that are chronic in our environment and actually go back and fix the root cause so that we don't have to deal with them all the time. Uh, and the other, the other uh, main part of the Operations Insight offering, uh, the last point there, is the, the new uh, dashboarding UI. So there's a few screenshots there from um, the Pulse demo from last year, and you can see uh, an example of some of the widgets that are available to you in the new dashboarding UI. It's really flexible, really powerful. So, Nick Operations Insight, where to next? So, these three challenges at the top of the page are what we have um, sought to address um, in this event grouping capability. So, um, in any environment, when you have an incident or an outage or something breaks, you can actually get hundreds, hundreds of events all relating to the same incident. Um, this, this in itself is, is very challenging to deal with um, in many uh, scenarios with, with the sort of customers we've been working with on this, you know, a, a large um, proportion of those events that come in during a major outage are critical as well. So you basically get this tidal wave of, of red hitting your screen. And, and managing that is, actually, is very challenging. Um, the second bullet point there, these events don't necessarily all hit the system at the same time. They can actually sort of appear over an extended period of time and um, they, we, we can't sort of guarantee any order that they might arrive as well. We'll just basically get a, a, a flood of events that hit the system. So the third bullet point here sums up one of the um, key um, challenges is that we end up with a lot of duplicate trouble tickets being opened. We end up with a lot of duplicated effort um, and, a, and a lot of unnecessary work. Um, and what, it, what often happens is we get a lot of additional unnecessary confusion uh, added to the mix and our mean time to repair uh, is not as good as it could be because of all of this um, duplication of efforts. So, question. After we've done a lot of uh, event housekeeping, we've identified events that we can sort of noise, that we can remove from our system, we've used seasonality to identify chronic problems, we still may legitimately have a whole bunch of events left in the system that we need to we need to deal with, we need to organize, we need to manage. So how can I do that better? How can I reduce the duplication and the cost in operations and the duplication of efforts? Um, not only does this add additional cost, but it actually adds a lot of confusion. And if I can address the first two, then we can hopefully address the third one there, which is to reduce the mean time to repair. So, the solution that uh, we've added to this uh, latest version of um, Operations Insight is uh, all around um, grouping and sorting the events according to relationships I know about and ones that I don't. <coughs> so, what are these? The relationships I know about uh, is, 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 a rule, is all about, um, there, there's lots of event sources out there that contain very, very structured data. Moreover, uh, a lot of these data streams have got the structure encoded into the into the data um, the, the, the data payloads. So um, this this is um, particularly true in telco based environments, um, but also isn't isn't necessarily restricted to telco. Um, but this this um, structured data we can actually leverage the the structure that's encoded into the data stream and sort and group based on that structure. 
So that's this is this is uh, an out of the box rule based um, re uh, grouping uh, capability. The second one there, relationships I don't know about. So we've got all the structured data. That's great. We can actually sort and group that. But what about everything else? We might have, and we typically do have, uh, events from a myriad of different sources, um, and there may be relationships between those events um, that all come from uh, a wide array of disparate systems. So how on earth am I going to find those? Well, we use analytics to do that. So um, we're going to have a quick look at these now. Um, key thing there at the bottom there is it's out of the box. There's no coding required. Uh, and that's a, a strategy which we're sort of working towards towards more and more, is to provide uh, more and more functionality out of the box so that you don't have to sit down and write impact policies, triggers, and, and, and stuff like that. Um, at the bottom of the slide there, you can just see a, a brief uh, look at uh, the new look event viewer that's showing you some of the grouping. So let's take a look at it now. So just to provide some context to this, <clears throat> so this is looking at the known relationships. So this is the structured data rule-based grouping. So <clears throat> if we consider a GSM network architecture as an example. Now, just a side note here, this functionality has been uh, specifically designed and engineered to be completely uh, industry and technology agnostic. So um, this works great for uh, telco um, devices and event sources but it will work uh, just as well for anything else as well. Um, what I'm trying to highlight on this slide is the definition of scope. So the containment model or the grouping, the grouping model that we use in this, um, this rule-based known relationships grouping is all around the notion of scope. So what is scope? So scope is defined as sort of a ring fence or, or a field of influence of, of an event or set of events on each other. So um, as an example, within a, a GSM network, um, the box of the pink box on the left here is the base station subsystem network. So our telco, our telco guys postulated the theory that if I have a bunch of alarms that all start to occur at the same time within the same base station controller subsystem, then I'm going to um, postulate that those events are related to the same incident. So, for example, um, something happens um, on the base station controller level, it's going to affect everything uh, underneath it. Uh, we've been working, as I said, with um, a number of uh, large customers, and we've actually validated this process, and it works very, very well indeed. So um, that's, the, that's the definition of scope. Now, in terms of implementation, the scope is just a label. So we can extract out of the uh, event stream um, the, the scope label. So in, our, in this particular example, it will be the, the base station controller um, sub-label, which is incidentally attached to every event that comes through that pink box. So it's very easy to actually leverage that structure in the data stream and simply group on that. And that's exactly what um, our telco probes are doing. They're looking at this uh, structured, uh, the structure contained in the data stream and simply um, doing containment based on that. So let's take a look at how it looks in the event list. What you can see in front of you is a whole bunch of um, Nokia NetApp data that's been sanitized uh, in order to use for demo purposes. So um, what you can see here is that it's been grouped based on the scope ID. In this case, it's um, uh, TLCO, TLCO, BTP 37458. So all of the events under that contained into that subcontainer all share the same scope ID, and they've all happened at the same time. Um, one couple of things to note here. Um, we can ticket the top-level synthetic containment event, um, as you can see at the top there, and anything that occurs subsequently uh, will get slotted into that container and will inherit the ticket number, the same ticket number. So now we've got a mechanism whereby we can either have operators ticketing stuff or auto-ticketing going on, and you know, this, this incident might be sort of spanning hours or even days in some cases we've seen. Uh, and all the while, as events come and go, um, they'll automatically append to the same ticket. So this is, this is the goal, because 
we end up with one ticket instead of potentially, um, we've heard of like dozens and even, you know, 100 plus tickets being opened, depending on the nature of the outage. The other thing that to note um, here is that um, we're actually off the shelf for the telco probes in the first instance. We are analyzing all of the alarm numbers and we're, we've, we've got uh, telco uh, experts analyzing the alarm numbers and categorizing them and applying a weighting to them, both in terms of their cause and impact. So just a quick aside here, what is cause and impact? Well, uh, vendors, vendors typically assign um, severity, event severity, to the impact that that alarm has on my uh, services or my users. So typically, if a service is unavailable, that will be a critical alarm. Now, that's, that's very important for operations to know and, and the business to know because we need to know how the um, incident or outage is affecting our business or our users. But from an operations point of view, we actually also need to know what the cause is so that we can actually fix it. So what we've actually done is we've actually split out the two concepts. We, we want to know basically both, both things about the alarm, its impact and its cause, it, its, its probable cause. Now, there's the key thing here is that we use probable cause, not root cause, and they're all relative weightings. And the nice thing about this is, is that because we can't guarantee the order that we receive events uh, relating to an incident, um, we might receive them in any order. But the nice thing is, is this is dynamic, and it will, it will work in much the same way as, as sort of a, a subject matter expert would, looking at the events that are currently in the system. They would, they would look at them, they would analyze them, and they would say, okay, these top two or top three, these are the most likely causes of what's going on here. I'll investigate those first. So basically, by sorting your event list by cause weight, um, you'll see those um, more probable root cause events bubble to the top automatically. And how is that reflected in the summary? Well, uh, as you can see on your screen, the top two events in the list there are the synthetic containment events, and the summary fields are being um, updated dynamically. So in this particular case, I've got one site affected, and the summary field of the second containment event is giving me a summary of the incident. It's telling me that I've got an operational warning and it's being caused by env environmental uh, factors. So in this particular case, I can see that I've got uh, high temperature alarms and uh, aircon failures. So, you know, in countries that are hot, for example, environmental alarms uh, are often uh, probable causes to um, large-scale outages, and that, that so so it's giving me a nice summary of the incident. It's giving me the impact and also the, the probable cause, so that I can actually address both. So just a quick case study. Um, I've just got some uh, notes here. You can read this for yourself. But we've got a, a big dump of data from a large European telco, um, and with a, a very, very large number of events, it, it says 8,700 events presented operators. Now, interestingly enough, um, the, about 80% of these were critical events. So how on earth, I mean, this, this is a two-day dump of data, but how on earth are you going to sort of manage these? Um, some of the incidents with more than 50 events in them, uh, and, so, and, and in some cases the events are sort of dribbling in over a 48-hour period. So it is a very high likelihood that you're going to end up with a whole lot of uh, duplicate tickets being opened. And this is um, what a number of our customers tell us is, is a big headache um, in terms of cost. So um, with the event grouping enabled, I see an initial uh, huge reduction in events presented to the operators, which in itself is terrific. But more, moreover, um, they're all grouped and packaged up together and kept together, um, even though the, the incident is, may continue for hours or days. Um, and that way I can actually just raise one triple ticket for the whole incident and whoever's working on it has all of the information relating to that incident captured in one place rather than having to look through several tickets and try and piece things together. So that's the rule-based uh, grouping, event grouping, based on known relationships, based on structured uh, event streams. What about everything else? So this is where analytics comes into play. So. What we do here 
is we actually point uh, the um, analytics engine in NetCore Operations Insight at your historical event data. So this is in a reporter uh, database, a reporter schema, running in reporter mode. You point it at your historical archive and start the analysis running. When it completes its analysis, uh, and it may take a while depending on how much data you're, you're getting it to uh, churn through, but typically this is sort of in the order of uh, minutes, uh, not hours, uh, it pre presents all the groupings that it's found back to the administrator. The administrator in each case can then sort of look through them and validate them, and then they've got a number of actions. So uh, one of those is deploy. So if I hit deploy as an administrator, it means I've checked the um, I've checked the rule and I've validated and I've I've, I've thought I've, I've said to myself this is actually a valid rule. I'm going to deploy this. And what it will actually do is in my operators consoles thereafter, it will start creating these uh, neat little event groups. So when I see the first event in this cluster arrive, I'm going to create a containment event. And then as the others all arrive, they'll all get slotted into that same bucket. So very, very convenient. It's completely uh, uh, agnostic as to the source of the event. It's just looking at the events as a whole, regardless of their source, and saying, I found all of these events together. These, these 63 events, they always occur together when, when they happen. And I've found this, you know, however many times in the event history. So it actually um, like gives you a conclusion of, of the strength of the of the grouping, the confidence of the grouping. I'm going to show you a demo of this in a few minutes. So let's move over to that now. There's no coding required. I've made I've merely pointed Nickel Operations inside at my historical archive and said, go and have a look and tell me what you find. And then it's come back and told me. And then I can just say yes or no to, to what it finds. So here's a quick screenshot of how it looks. I won't dwell on this very long because I'm going to take you into a live demo. So known relationships. What I've got here is I've got a, a big two-day dump of Nokia NMS 2000 data from a real system. Um, I've actually, to make it easier to see, I've actually, I'm actually filtering on one scope ID. And uh, I've, I've got the scope ID there. So I've actually got a, a filter in place. So I'm only going to see events from that scope ID. There's 2,023 alarms. A lot of those deduplicate, by the way. Um, after the dust is cleared, because events are going to come in, they're going to generically clear, and so on and so forth, uh, there's, there's 39 outstanding events. Now, bear in mind that this is two days' worth of data that I'm injecting into my test system within a matter of minutes. So we're going to see a lot of events come and go very, very rapidly as I run this demo. Overall, though, this particular incident for this BSC label has affected 27 sites and spans like just over a day. Uh, however, uh, it creates just a single event group and one ticket, more importantly. So I'm just going to run that now so you can see how it looks. I've got my dash here. I'm going to start the influx of data, and I'm just going to let this run. And I'm going to hit the refresh button and let it run, because a picture is worth a thousand words. And I figure folks would probably be interested to see this like running live. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm actually, as an operator, um, so remember this is this is like two days of data being injected in like a space of a few minutes. So what I'm going to do as an operator, or this might be actually uh, done automatically, I'm going to cut a ticket off my top level uh, event. So as you can see, my TT number has been propagated with my ticket number. So that's good. It's churning away. That ticket number is already propagated down. And you can see here, I've already got 15 sites affected. So um, the other thing I've done in this particular demo is a number of our customers have told us that they actually modify the delete clears trigger to keep clear events in the system for up to an hour rather than clearing them away too quickly. Now the point of that is is that so they can they can see if they get some flapping going on so that they can actually see in the context of the system uh, failures as they're happening in, um, over over a period of time. In this particular example, I have. Um, expanded one of the sites involved, one of the 16 sites, and you can see here the cause and impact is actually both the same thing. 
And if you scan your eye over to the cause column, actually all of these events are all the same. They're all the same type. In this particular case, uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, events of tr uh, traffic channel activation failures, but then I'm getting the clearing event come up. So that in itself is all very well and good. Um, but in the bigger picture, the fact that these are all going down and coming up, uh, and as you can see, it's affecting pretty much every TRX and channel on my entire device, that actually could be an indication of a bigger problem. So um, that's really useful, and it's something that I may not actually observe uh, if I had been trying to view these events within the context of a flat event list. So um, I'm just going to let it run a bit longer. You can see these, these events have come in over several hours. So this is really interesting stuff. The fact that they're grouped and, and organized and sorted is great. So that's running. Uh, I've got up to 19 sites affected now, 20 sites now. I'm going to let that run for a bit longer. While that's running, I'm going to come back to it in a tick uh, in a couple of minutes when the event data is finished uh, injecting. Uh, just a, a quick side note here. How much easier is it to have one contained incident with everything packaged up under it rather than trying to manage just events all over the show? So I'll come back to that in a tick. I'm just going to jump over to the um, unknown relationship grouping. So this is the one that uses the uh, analytics to actually go and look at my historical archives and try to find groups that are, um, it finds in there that I may not have any idea exist. So what I've done earlier is I ran a test uh, on, my on my sort of historical archive, and I've called that run t uh, test z. As you can see, uh, the highlighted line here, I actually found 86 groupings uh, within my historic archive, and that there's 517 events in total that are members of these groups. If I select test z, you'll see in the lower left panel it's actually listed all the different groupings that it's found. If I pick on test Z group one, you can see there's a strong relationship here. There's 63 events uh, in this grouping of events. And by the way, in my event history, I've seen this grouping 18 times. So it's pretty good indication that this grouping is a valid group. And it's a tremendous, uh, tremendously large number of events too. Uh, as you can see on the right there, it's actually giving me a, a preview of the events and showing me that um, most of them are critical. So being able to group all these events together is great. What I can do now is I can actually drill down onto grouping one to show me more details about it. What this will actually do is it's actually showing me all the individual occurrences of this grouping that have been found. Um, so. June 13th, 2013, at 10.30 in the morning, uh, 63 events, 63 events, 63 events. Um, as I select each one, over on the right, it's actually showing me the raw events. So I can actually have a really good look at them and find out all the details about them, when they happened, the node they came from, and so on and so forth. The other view that I have to look at is timeline view. So I can actually see, at a better glance, um, the sequence that the events came in. It's showing me this, a similar information just in, in a different way of looking at it. So at the bottom of the screen here, I've got some options here. I can either watch this rule, which means it will continue to quietly gather statistical information about this grouping, or I can, if I'm satisfied that it's valid, I can actually go ahead and deploy it. From then on, in my event console, if, I, if this grouping ever occurs again, it will automatically start grouping them together in my event viewer. So what I'll end up with in my event view is groupings, um, my, my event data being grouped and organized uh, for me based on both the relationships I know about from my structured data, the rule-based grouping, as well as the relationships I don't know about, which is the analytics-based grouping. But both, both groupings coexist quite nicely in the event list together. So in this way, I can really make a huge difference in both reducing the rows that I'm presenting to my operators uh, and also, um, more importantly, I think, is grouping them and, and keeping the related events together.
Have we got any um, questions at this time? I'll, I'll hand back to Robin and just... Um Thanks, Zane. Yes, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to use the chat tool to um, type your questions in. In the meantime, we did have a question earlier from Don's presentation. Um, here's the question. It was mentioned about alert integration in Omnibus. Is it a separate tool integrated into Omnibus or all in built? Um, I'm not quite sure I un understand the question. I was certainly talking about um, the uh, range of uh, integrations, like sort of, uh, additional probes that we uh, have added from time to time. Uh, but looking at the analysis, uh, analytics pieces that we've just been describing, the known grouping, i.e. Those, those relationships which uh, Zane has just shown you, uh, you can define, you know in advance that these are related, you can build in that information. That capability is built purely on um, uh, omnibus uh, rules and triggers and it, uh, in, enrichment at the uh, pro level. Uh, you have the option of doing your own enriction, either at the probe, but also through impact. But the known event relationships deliver in uh, Nequil Omnibus uh, within uh, interim features of 8.1. And the event list grouping, the, 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 the viewer with these groupings is in Omnibus. The unknown grouping and the seasonality analytics are specific to Operations Insight. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Don. Does anyone, if uh, whoever asked the question wanted to elaborate on more or um, had any other questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and same with everyone else. Whilst they're taking time to do that, I will just add to both my initial comments and Zane's presentation. This became generally available last week. Um, it is built on customer experience, customer data, extensive customer trials. There were people at Interconnect talking about this capability with evidence from their own environments. This is not fresh off the development block ready for you to test, if you like, does, do you get good results? Real people have got good results in their environments uh, from the, the, the pre-GA trials that have been uh, running uh, over the past uh, uh, several months. So um, good stuff in there, people are already getting value from, um, by all means, take a look at it. Just, just in addition to Don's comments, um, I'd just like to say when I was at Interconnect, I was actually um, showing this to um, a customer in the, uh, the motor industry, and uh, they actually have a lot of um, satellite buildings dotted all over the uh, United States. And um, for them, uh, the scope uh, would be the location of the site name because um, you know they had these little prefabricated buildings, just a single sort of room or couple of rooms, and their, their thinking was, well, if I get a bunch of alarms all occurring at the same time from a single building, then chances are it's related. And that's my idea of containment for scope. So uh, scope can basically mean whatever you want it to be. Uh, and that, that's a key point, is that it's not technology specific. All right, thank you. We did have another comment come in. Um, the web interface appears a lot faster in the web GUI 7.4. Are you running it locally or on remote server? Um, this is actually running on a remote server. Um, the, the new dash is, is, is a, in my experience, is a lot quicker than TIP. Uh, this, this event viewer that you're looking at, it, there's no Java applets involved at all. It's all web, it's all HTML5. It's very, very fast. I, I find it personally um, just as fast just as fast as the native event list. Um, and of course, it's got all this other stuff that the native event list doesn't have. Okay, thank you. And we have another question. Um, are tools available in the event viewer yet? 
Yes, yes. they certainly are. <laughs> yes, I'll, 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 I'll show you now. I'll take this event here and I'll change its severity to critical. Here we go. So, yeah, all the tools are there. Yeah, and I would add that it's exactly the same tool uh, engine as uh, the one used in the older active event list uh, with the Java plugin. Um, and so, uh, what customers were telling us before the most recent release is that as many as three quarters of their users, event list users, were already able to use the event viewer. Um, and it, that's no, no longer a good name for it, but that's what we use for now. Uh, one of the key things that they called out, which meant that you know, some customers could not yet do that, uh, was that the event viewer did not support multiple data sources, i.e. the ability in a single view to bring in events from more than one object server. That was fixed last week. Um, and so you now not only have the tools capability, you also have the multiple data source capability brought on from the uh, active event list. Our aim is that well, this is pretty much now a complete replacement for the active event list. We, there's some uh, improvements. We want to make the possible to change the font size, for example, a lot more easily. Uh, but the ground functionality of the event viewer uh, should be good for the majority of event previously event list users in this latest fix pack. Thank you very much. Um, the next question is, so now in the latest version of Web GUI, do we still use TIP or DASH? Apologies if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Uh, DASH. 8.1 um, and of course all the subsequent features is fully involved in DASH. Um, we did this in two stages. Omnibus 7.4 um, still runs in TIP. However, we made some improvements so that for those people who had a Dash environment for other products, that they were able to launch TIP-based Omnibus components into their dashboards. Not with a full wiring capability, but certainly with some hotspot launching context, uh, you can run um, a Omnibus 7.4 active event list or map in a Dash environment using that capa um, compatibility capability, as we called it. From 8.1, Omnibus moved entirely into Dash. Um, and so at the same time, we released some uh, compatibility configurations for ITNM, ITNCM, which are still running in TIP. And so for those of you who move who have the network management pieces as well, who move Omnibus up into Dash, you have the capability through the integration pack that actually ships inside Omnibus because until you get 8.1, you don't need it, um, but you have that capability to launch the ITNM, ITNCM tip-based components into frames within a Dash dashboard. But Omnibus itself, 8.1, 100% in Dash. Okay, our next question is, is there an option to host other application URLs in Dash? If you can launch them in an iframe, yes. And indeed, that's how um, uh, a tip-based active event list would be launched, for example. Um, so, yep, that is, is one, one feature. Uh, you can federate third-party data through either TDI or Impact into um, Dash widgets. And you can also uh, write your own data provider if you wish to bring other data into the Dash area. But if it's a URL launched application, you can do that in an iframe and um, let's say link it to a hotspot so you can launch it. Okay, and then the next question. Any plans for moving IT and M GUI to Dash as well near soon? Um, there are the team are looking at, uh, at that plan uh, right now. Um, it's uh, not a trivial uh, task so for the moment. We have that ca compatibility capability that I, I referred to, configurable. Um, but um, that um, uh, is in not committed date level of plan, but is in planning uh, to bring that, that up to a dash level. 
And I see a, a, tech, a question in the chat, which is related to one that we just um, referred to. Um, will the uh, application launched through iFrame have LDAP authentication? It depends whether that application supports LDAP applica uh, authentication, for example. Omnibus does, and for 7.4 users who choose to bring the Omnibus tip pieces up into a Dash environment, the single sign-on is enabled by that integration work. So if a customer starts in Dash and launches a tip-based active event list, they do not have to sign on again to get down to tip. That's, that sign-on is handled at the back end, and LDAP authentication is what is typically used uh, by a tip Dash uh, user. And then we had a question come through to myself. Um, how is scope ID field populated? Is a new field in Omnibus 8.1 or part of the NOI integration package? So um, perhaps I'll answer this one. So the scope ID is a new field introduced in, in uh, Netcore Operations Insight. And it's, uh, the implementation is it's just a, it's just a string field, uh, as I mentioned in my presentation. Um, the it just it just is um, accepts a string value which have, and, and and reflects or represents a scope that makes uh, most sense to you and your business. So in the example, we were we were just simply lifting the base station controller label out of the data stream and putting that as our scope ID. Um, but that that could be anything. It could be any string you like, whatever means uh, makes sense to you. So like in the example I gave before of the. Um, the motor industry client, uh, they would use um, sort of the location name, for example, or the, the, maybe the, the site ID as their scope. But it can be anything you like. It can be set in the pro rules, um, as in this particular example, or it can actually be set um, via enrichment and impact. So the events arrive in the object server, uh, impact might do some enrichment on them and set the scope ID then. So, for example, you might have a... a a method of containment that's based on information stored in a configuration database, for example, and you get impact to look that up. But um, yeah, either in the probe rules or or after the after insert um, via enrichment, it's both are, both are fine. And as I referred in the uh, early part of the call, uh, the the current uh, pre-designed rules and uh, enrichment uh, that we have available is limited at the moment to uh, NetAct and NMS. Uh, we have in the roadmap delivering more capability, but it, as you've seen, the structure that drives the underlying cleverness, if you like, is simple event enrichment, is working out, knowing what the right relationships are, which ones are likely to be the probable cause, which ones are service impacting, and there is guidance as to how you can implement that yourselves or through a you know, services partner doing that kind of thing for you, specifically for your environment. Because this is one of the, the challenges we see. Um, you know, uh, correlation engines, which are kind of black box, where the events pop in the bottom and the answer magically comes out of the top, but hides all of the symptoms, uh, are not always so helpful. There's some very strong feedback that we got from people who were looking at this. They liked the fact that the underlying stuff is available to those that need to see it, but to the high-level guys who are just driving the ticket, there's that one line with all the stuff adding up in, in behind. Um, so we will continue to develop that library, but also, as, as customers have already told us, they can see how they can use these structures simply by adding the right data into the event. The grouping happens. You just, it, it, it's that matter of doing the analysis of getting the relationships and building them in. And that, that's, a, that's an excellent point that Don makes um, that I meant to make uh, earlier, which I forgot to make, uh, is that previous, previous attempts at, at sort of managing the large volumes of events uh, have involved filtering and, and all sorts of, um, you know, uh, suppressing events from operators' views. But there's always a danger in that, that you hide the wrong stuff. It, you know, it, it's an inherent risk. The nice thing about this setup is that all of the events are available to the operator if they want to look at them. So you don't need to hide stuff. You just sort of like hide them with the twisty. It's really, really handy. And and just to finish off also, uh, another point is the cause weight and the impact weight. 
Those are uh, modifiable. You can set those as part of your enrichment. And the higher the number, the, 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 that, that one will bubble to the top if it has a bigger number. And it's sort of simply compared against the other ones in the same bucket. Um, there's actually a string field uh, in there called normalized alarm name. And the, syn the synthetic containment event here that's telling me my service delivery here is it reported as non-functional caused by performance degradation. So that's actually plucking the normalized alarm name out of the event with the highest uh, cause weight and impact weight respectively and constructing that summary field. So you can, you can really customize this and, um, and have, it, have it sort of summarizing things however you, however you need. It's very flexible and very customizable. Okay, we had another question. Um, I see Don already answering Shannon, so I'm going to move on to this one. Is the full functionality of Event Viewer available in Web GUI as well, which yes. uh, which shown here, okay. or specific to Operations Insight? Uh, the activity, the Event Viewer, and all the event grouping is native Omnibus Web GUI 8.1. The, and the grouping, the known grouping, is in Omnibus. The seasonality and unknown grouping is unique to Operations Insight. Basically, the, anal the analytics pieces are all in op Operations Insight. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, I believe at this moment, um, oh, no, here we had another one come in. What if you wanted to group groups? Let's say you group by scope ID and make one group times one TT, and then you want to group several TT into the into one new super group, like a customer group. That's a good question. Uh, the way it works is, if you if you have a ticket number in an event that's uh, higher up the stack, uh, it will propagate its ticket number down automatically. Uh, what you can do, of course, is um, say, for example, I had a, a number of sites here, and I knew that this site I wanted to, you know, create a separate ticket for for various reasons. I can actually go ahead and create a ticket off that one, or even individual events if I wanted to. Um, the way the ticket number propagation works is it won't overwrite the ticket number of an event that already has a ticket number. It's only going to propagate down a, a ticket number to events that don't have one already. So you can you can you can it caters for the scenarios where um, you want to raise several tickets. I mean the potential is to cut one, but there are cases where you might want to cut several. Thank you. And our next question. And to clarify, ITM and ITNCM are not integrated with Dash yet. So the AEL ITNM tools are not available in Dash. That, that's a I, I actually that just finished ready. typing the, the answer oh. to that one, but uh, <laughs> Thanks, worth saying John. anyway, um, yeah, I, uh, ITNM, ITNCM are now in the similar state to Omnibus 7.4. It runs in TIP, but can be launched from a DASH dashboard. Uh, the configuration that allows you to do that ships with Omnibus 8.1. It's simply an integration pack so that the latest versions of ITNM, ITNCM, although they're still running in TIP, can be launched uh, into an iframe, for example, you typically an iframe in a dashboard that's running in Dash. So you can have them side by side. Um, you just don't have the full wiring capability and all the magic stuff that Dash actually provides. But yet they are compatible. In the same way that Omnibus 7.4, still in TIP, uh, has that integration capability so that the Omnibus 7.4 GUI in TIP can be launched from Dash. Thanks. And uh, another question came in. So you still need to manually analyze the data to define your groups. Uh, for those uh, uh, groups that we don't yet define, uh, provide uh, integration packs for, then uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, we, as I said, we do intend to grow that as quickly as we can. 
Um, but I think there, there will always be uh, groupings that are unique to a customer's domain. All right. Well, thank you very much for answering the questions, Don and Zane. Um, I believe at this time that's all the questions we have for today. Um, thanks so much for spending the hour with us, and a special thank you to you, to you, Don and Zane, for offering your time and sharing your knowledge with us. Again, apologies in the beginning for those who had to come on um, who were late for it and who were early for it. We apologize for the time change causing that issue. Sorry, I'm just having another question come in. I don't want to jump off without answering it. When will there be a troubleshooting on NOI? Uh, I'm not quite sure what, in what context, troubleshooting what, uh, <laughs> to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, so I'm afraid I don't quite understand the question. Maybe a troubleshooting guide or something? The whole installation. There are best practices uh, available on Smart um, Service Management Connect, which um, uh, describe the sort of installation um, and, and good practice and how to bring the, the whole lot together. Um, I've actually just shown. Yeah, I've got that up there. So this is the um, the Developer Works uh, best practices site for NetTool. So um, this might answer the question in that um, we have best practice documents for Omnibus, for Impact, etc. Uh, included in that is some around Net Cooperations Insight. So there's a guide that we've put together which takes you through installing and, uh, and, and or upgrading your incumbent system to Net Cooperations Insight or if you're just installing afresh. So it takes you through all the part numbers, um, screenshots, commands to type, what you expect to see. Uh, takes you through from start to finish, so um, that may be that may be helpful in answering the question. And, and let's be clear here: the the building blocks of Operations Insight are NetCall Omnibus, NetCall Impact, uh, what is now called op uh, Operations Analytics Log Analysis, and ITN, ITNM, ITNCM, Dash, Tip. Those are the fundamental building blocks. What makes NOI unique is some configurations and plug-in capability at the higher level. Underlying troubleshooting of Omnibus is troubleshooting of Omnibus, as it always was. So um, there's not a, um, a major technical piece uh, that requires specific troubleshooting at the higher level. It's primarily plug-in that drives the underlying stuff. Uh, and so uh, you know, you're fairly quickly down into the, the component products when it comes down to troubleshooting and actually application instances. So this um, particular page that you're looking at, uh, if you want the short URL for it, it's ibm.biz, B-I-Z, forward slash NCO underscore BPs. So that's ibm.biz, forward slash NCO underscore BPs. Yep, thanks, Zane. And guys, I appreciate it. it's been a, a good long time, slightly over the hour. Apologies for again for the confusion over the start time. For those that missed the beginning, the replay will be up soon. Yes, agreed. The replay will be up for everyone. If you have any other questions following today's call, you can also join our forum discussion, place them there, and they can be answered at a later date. And I see that we're asking for the uh, the short link. Um, Zane, would you happen to have that where we could paste that into the chat, or is this something we could send after the call? Yeah, I'll type it in now. Okay, thank you very much. So, Zane, I'll type that in. And again, thank you everyone for joining. We really appreciate you taking the time. Don and Zane, we really appreciate you presenting to us. Um, please visit the TUC website where we will post the recorded webcast from today. And as I mentioned, join the forum discussion on topics we discussed today and ask any other questions you may possibly have. This concludes today's conference. You may now disconnect. I hope everyone has a wonderful day.